I've never asked you this question as well since we've started this endeavor. And I can understand if your answer is no. Okay, so I, I want you to be 100% honest. Is it hard for you to talk about John Jones in an unbiased manner? Because John has made it very personal uh, with you, right? He's talked about your family. He's defeated you twice. He tested positive. So I can understand if you say like, look, I just can't, you know, I hate the guy. I can't call it down the middle when it comes to John Jones. Mm -hmm. How do you, like when, when, I, when I'm about to ask you now about him saying he's going to vacate the title and his issues with the UFC, is it hard for you to be unbiased when it comes to John Jones? Because I can no. certainly understand why it would be. No, you know, my whole thing is with this Jones thing is, you know, we have, we've obviously had our issues and those things are going to continue. But if, if he does something that's admirable, oh, absolutely, I can speak to it. If he does something that is bad, I can speak to it. I, it it's not, I don't, I think they're like, man, I, I tell you, man, today when I saw that video of Jones, because it popped on ESPN MMA, I said, good for Jones. Like, good for Jones. Like, if you have a chance to protect your city and don't, you know, don't walk up and be fragile and, and, and afraid because people don't, he goes, give me the spray can, right? Like, give it to me. And the guy did it because the people that are out there in those masks hidden behind their hiding behind their faces, they're, they're afraid. They're not going to fight him and try to go and vandalize things in his city. Uh, when he's in their face, it, I can honor, I can give him credit for the things that he does well, but also if he does something uh, that I don't agree with, I will say that too, you know, but yeah, I feel like I can speak uh, okay. as unbiased as I can be. So what a mess this has turned into, right? Um, it's now escalated to the point where yesterday he said, I'm vacating my title. I'm walking away. And until you guys want to re-engage and pay me for a super fight like Izzy, like Nganu, I'm just going to chill out here. Do you believe him when he says this? Because let's be honest, we've seen guys say, I'm retired, I'm done, this and that, and then they come back. How do you feel about this latest message from him? So this is what I think. And this is so crazy. I believe that he is more serious about walking away because in all those times that he was suspended and hurt and all that other stuff are gone. He kind of learned to live without that belt. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because for a long time, he held the belt when he beat me the first time for so long that when he lost that belt, he probably thought his world was ending. But then he was gone for two years. And life probably didn't seem all that different. So he's probably looking at life right now and understanding that if I walk away from this belt, is my life really going to change all that much? And uh, I think that gives him comfort in being able to say the things that he's saying. Um, so I think, I think, I think to a degree he does believe, uh, I, I do believe that he's, he's serious. Here's what we know. John Jones wants to get paid more if he moves up to heavyweight. His stance is, if you're going to pay me the same amount that you paid me to fight Dominic Reyes or Thiago Santos, what's the point? How am I incentivized to move up and fight a, a, a guy yeah. like, like Francis Ngannou? We know, as he revealed last week, that he gets around $5 million per fight and that he wants a bump. We don't know what that bump means. We don't know what it equals out to. Dana White said Deontay Wilder money he asked for, which is around $30 million. So when he made his last fight, then John comes back and says, I never said Deontay Wilder. So we've got this weird back and forth going on where then Dana is saying he's talking to Hunter Campbell, who's, you know, essentially, if you want to break it down like this in the UFC, Dana White is the president slash owner of the UFC. Hunter Campbell's like the GM, right? He's the one who makes the deals. He's the one who, who, who's negotiating, right? He's, uh -huh. he's chief legal counsel, but he's really doing like the day-to-day -day deals. And it seems like they have a good relationship, but this back and forth on Twitter, text message, this and that, Best of my knowledge, DC, they haven't even sat down and like really negotiated. So why is it coming to this? Well, you got egos, right? Both of these yeah. guys are, are have have big egos. You know, not many people stand up Dana White in this way. And uh John Jones feels as though he's so valuable that Dana White shouldn't stand up to him in that way. So uh any you know, I, I feel like anytime it's it's more public than normal, but if you think negotiations in football, baseball, basketball don't resemble this Well, I'm walking away and then they come back to the table Well, I'm walking away and they come back to the table. You're insane. It happens at every level in every single sport, just not as publicly. 
right? It's hidden behind a whole bunch of beautiful words. When the when the NBA Players Association goes, we're walking away. Somebody talks to Woj. Woj wraps it up in a beautiful bow. And then the owners talk to Woj, and then Woj wraps it in a beautiful bow, presents it to ESPN and SportsCenter. We're, it's the same thing that's going on. But there's just a big difference publicly, here, right? Because but not the, filtered. It's just right. not filtered. Sure. They're, but this is a filtering it through the media. They're, you think that those guys, you don't think that there's been a time where Mark Cuban, you know how upset he gets at times, doesn't yeah. yell at one of his players and go, ah, you, know, you can go to another team, we'll trade you. And then right. they come back to the table. It's the same thing. Yeah. No, I mean, and also worth noting, Dana White and John Jones have been butting heads for eight years, right? Stemming from the fact that mm -hmm. John was supposed to fight Dan Henderson at UFC 151. Henderson gets injured. Chael Sonnen says, I'll do it. 10 days notice. John says, no, they canceled the event. Since that moment, they've never had a good relationship. Let's be yeah. honest, right? Mm -hmm. They've never seen eye to eye. And John has given them a lot of reasons not yeah. to, to be on his side, right? And they've, for the most part, had his back. But let's also be honest, it's in their best interest to have his back. He's very valuable to the company. He's probably the third highest paid fighter on the roster right now. He's, you know, champion for nine years. So they'll do business with him because it's good for them to do business. But here's the thing. Here's my greatest lesson out of all of this. And I want to get your take on it because you know about this intimately. The greatest lesson in all of this is the system as far as the way you guys are contracted is broken. And what I mean by that is John Jones said, you promised me that if I moved up to heavyweight, you would give me a bump in pay. Well, that shouldn't, be the way it works. It should be in writing. Enough of these promises, enough of these handshakes, enough of all this stuff. That might work for some, but hey, when when pandemics hit, when times get tough, they'll be like, no, we're just going to pay you what's on your contract. And the problem is that the he has a six fight deal. He has six fights left on his contract, right? So they can very legally say, you're going to fight for what's on your deal. Well, historically, they'll change deals. They'll re-up. They'll renegotiate. There's no real like there's no system here. It doesn't work. That's why you don't hear LeBron James. That's why, you, look, look at the Scottie Pippen situation that we had with the last dance. He couldn't get out of that deal. He signed it. He had to abide by it. He had to respect it. In MMA, it's all very willy-nilly. Backroom deals, locker room deals. We're going to sign you to a 10-fight deal, but then we're going to renegotiate. If you want it to change, John Jones, managers, fellow fighters, you have to get it in writing. And then it ends it. You know, when he said they promised him a bump in pay, two his credit right he's fighting for that great to the ufc's credit first thing dana said was a guy goes i want some more money if i want a little more money then okay but when you start doubling we talked about this a few weeks ago you start doubling tripling quadrupling your pay now it's different when dana says if you want a little bit more money it's not five hundred thousand dollars it's not a hundred thousand dollars he's talking millions of dollars in john jones's case you have to understand that. Ariel, I'm going to tell you this right now. I won the belt in 2015. This was when Conor McGregor was becoming the man, right, and truly changing the pay structure of the UFC. People want to not give Conor credit for it, but guys, would if a guy made a million dollars back in the day, it was massive. Hmm. Conor McGregor, he blew the roof off in terms of what MMA fighters could make. Um, I won the belt in 2015. I got me a good contract, and I told Dan and Lorenzo, I said, hey, I don't plan on losing the belt, but if I do, I go at least make my pay 300 grand. Do you remember when former champions used to make $300,000, mm -hmm. and it was like a pretty good contract? That's my contract today, mm. $300,000 as the challenger, because luckily for me, I never lost that belt. So I had that same contract making all that money from 2015 to 2019. So when it's time for me, to go and negotiate my fight purse for my fight against Steve Miocic? You think today I want to make $300,000 to fight? No. Do you think I'm going to make $300,000 to fight? No, because I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to talk to them. Um, and we've had uh, beginning conversations, and they're going to take care of you. It's just a matter of how you approach the yeah. conversation. And I think that... If, if Jones, I'm telling you, man, like I'm telling you as a guy that deals with it, I didn't, if I made, you know, $3 million or $4 million for a fight, they're not going to take me back to $300,000. Hell, they may give me the same amount of money. It's just the way that you approach a fight or a, a, a negotiations is very key in this because again, you got fighters. These aren't 
they, you, you got, these are fighters, you know, and, and I think that they can still make this thing work. I just think that you got to find the right number. And I think well, that, that'll happen. That's, that's the problem. Someone was asking me this last night on Sports Center. Michael Leaves said, okay, what does John want? We don't know. He hasn't said it. And I think Dana that's what won't John, say it. Well, I think, I, well, I think when you, so okay, I process elimination. You want right? you not to take all the money. But he says no. That's Stop. That's $30 million. John said half of Deontay. Well, I, didn't John say something about maybe he wanted half? He hasn't. He hasn't pinned down any number. He really has. Somebody said something about half of Deontay Wilder's number, but then that will put you on the fifteen million dollar range. Then you start working either back, forward, or in the middle of that number, and there you got it. But think, John admitted to making five million dollars a fight, right? You start working back half of fifteen million. Now you're sitting at seven, eight million dollars. I am not. I am almost one hundred percent certain. The UFC would pay a seven, eight million dollar base for him to go fight Francis. And if this is such a, if he's such a big star, and it's going to do so well, then maybe the pay per view will get you to the number that you want to be, right? If it if it has as much intrigue as people are saying it does, if and then that's on the fans, right? It's on the fans who are supporting you in this fight to go out and purchase the pay per view. And when they do, now you make all the money that you need. That's right. that's. That's how I feel. Like, and and look, I feel like we're doing a better job of negotiating for them than they are at this point. I don't think he's hey, I don't think he's wrong. If the guy really understands his value and he's gonna stick to his guns, good for you. But I also think that it's just a I think it this happens at every level and with every single sport, just not as publicly. Look, people are comparing Wilder to him. Like reportedly, Wilder Fury 2 did around 800, 850,000. That's the same number that you versus him did the second time, right? So but, same- what else, but, but that's, again, Wilder Fury. I think everybody needs a, a partner, right? I know what I made sure, with Jones sure. the second time and the first time, opposed to what I made against Alexander Gustafson and those guys. Well, I'm just saying you can't, like, pick and choose. Like, take Wilder's best fight, which is or biggest fight, the Fury yep. fight. Take his biggest fight, which happened to be you four mm-hmm. years ago or whatever yep. it was, and then compare. You can't compare Wilder Fury to to Jones Reyes is not the same. So, so do you, so you're saying take the best case scenario in, in hope or believe that Nganu Jones does better than what we did. I think Nganu Jones, if promoted correctly, maybe isn't as big as you guys. Cause there's not the same heat there. It takes two to tango in terms of, you know, talking and building it up. And you guys had some serious bad blood, but if you build it up, the Francis Nganu is an absolute truck, right? I mean, this guy is annihilating people in 20 seconds. Has won four in a row. We haven't seen a guy like this in the heavyweight division since Mike Tyson, and he's going up against the undefeated, undisputed champion, moving up to the heavyweight division, who's never been knocked down, who's never been, you know, beat up, blah blah blah. Who's never lost, right? Unofficially, yeah, for um, sure. That's a sellable fight. All right, here we go. Now, let me give you another. Let me give you some more insight that I probably shouldn't share. Please. Boston, 2018, Daniel versus Vulcan, Francis versus Stipe, same thing, right? Uh, the biggest, strongest, fastest dude that's ever been, two championship fights, and Jeremy, uh, who else fought? A ton of people fought on that fight card. We sold maybe 400,000 pay-per-views, maybe 400,000. For all that, so yeah, but that was in the old pay per view model. So, are you versus Francis isn't the same as Jones versus Francis? So, you think that it's gonna double? You think that it's gonna double? Well, look, hey, I didn't expect you, I didn't expect 249 to do 700. That's an absurd number for two, yeah, but I don't even know if two, four, I, yeah, but if, but do you so first sport back in all those months is 250 gonna do the same type of number? No, is 51 gonna do the same number? 52 it's first thing back in a long time, so it's like. You, you, you got to keep things in perspective. And I think that to expect that um, you put those guys into the octagon and all of a sudden it, it's going to do gangbusters unless something crazy happens, right? Jones and I did those crazy numbers, one, because of the bad blood, also because we went to the first fight. We were both undefeated. The press conference fight, all the lobbing insults back and forth, like that's why all that happened. But do you think for a second I haven't tried to recreate those types of things with other ones? Oh, it no, doesn't it's- just work like that. Sure, it, sure. It, it takes it takes like a, it's almost lightning in a bottle. The only person that can recreate that over and over is Connor. He's the only one that's been able to do that time and time again. So it takes a little bit more than people going, oh, my goodness, these are two good fighters. We're all going to watch. It just doesn't work like that. 
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.